Welcome to Black Belt Selling with Stephanie and Anna Scheller. I'm Anna. And I'm Stephanie. We're a mother-daughter team who are passionate about helping you kick through those obstacles that keep you from making more sales. Think about a time where you could get to the end of your day and you think, you know, I don't have to worry about tomorrow because I have so many sales in the pipeline and I'm getting ready to close so many more. Wouldn't you be like that? Well, that's what we're here to help you do. And we bring extraordinary guests like the gentleman that we have with us today. I hope I get his name right because I keep messing it up, but um, you'll understand when I introduce our guest. And we also bring tremendously great content. You can join us by going to our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash black belt selling. And you just have to click that you want to join and Stephanie and I will let you right in. We post motivational content. Um, we have people who contribute with their motivational content. Plus, you get to hear exactly when our shows go on the air. So we would love to have you join us there. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash black belt selling. And Stephanie, today our guest is Simon Crow. I got it right. I keep wanting to call him Russell, but I understand Russell's a distant, like, fifth cousin or something. No, not really. Um, <laughs> um, Simon is a transformational coach with 10 years of experience changing lives. He taught in Italy, the UK, and Spain for eight years, and he has a master's degree in media technology. He's led leadership and communication programs for some of the largest banks and corporations in the United Kingdom. He's trained hundreds of coaches and spoken at transformational events all around the world. And he specializes in coaching successful, energetic people with bold visions for what they want to create and experience. So, Simon, welcome to Black Belt Selling. Thank you. It's great to be here. Now, um, that is quite a, quite a resume that you have there, but how did you get started? Because obviously you didn't start as a kid, you know, turning 29 again, I'm sure. <laughs> How did I get started in coaching? Yes. It's a, it's a, I mean, you, are, you said you didn't start as a kid. In, interestingly, when I was in my early 20s, I started teaching. As you alluded to, I traveled around Europe teaching English as a foreign language. Um, um, and why that's relevant to coaching is because I developed a style as a teacher which was very much about the students empowering themselves. Um, so what I mean by that is you, you have the model of the teacher who is, who is the, the sage on the stage who stands there and transmits information to the, to the students. Well, what I discovered was, um, because I particularly worked with adults, I was an adult language teacher, is that people like to make choices for themselves. They like to control um, what they study and when they study and how they study and what's relevant for them. And if they can draw on their past experiences, it makes the learning experience much more real. So my master's degree, was in, which was in media technology, was specifically media technology for teaching adults. And it was about how we could use the, the emerging internet as it was, because it was a few years ago since I did it, mm -hmm. use the emerging internet to allow adults to make greater choices in how they learn. So they yeah. could learn using the internet or using technology to, if you like, take more control over their learning. So I haven't been a coach all of my life, but I've certainly had a coaching approach, the values I have about developing people and giving people new opportunities. But I got my, my coaching journey started kind of officially about 11 years ago when I was working for a large company in the UK. It was a, it was a public body. It was quite an important role. I was managing a team of 12. But I was really down. It was a job that I'd done for maybe eight years um, I'd reached the, the kind of the pinnacle. I couldn't really go anywhere else within the organization. And so what I tended to do was just to turn in on myself. And I was beginning to lose a little bit of confidence. I couldn't really see the value I was bringing to the organization. The team was so sort of brilliant that, that I really didn't have much of a role to do there. And uh, I guess I was beginning to lose a sense of, of who I was and what I brought to the organization. And then one day somebody said, we're going to hire some coaches does anybody want to work with one well I had an inkling what coaches did so I just signed up and I, I worked with a, a lady called Jane who is still a friend of mine 
um, for about three months. And within four to five months, I'd left a job that I'd been in there for eight years and couldn't find a, a way out of. And what was, yeah. what was incredible about that was the impact on me of what, what she'd enabled me to do, help, help me to get some real clarity about what I wanted to create. But I realized in that moment that what I really wanted to do was to reconnect with making an impact on the people rather than simply being a manager. So if you like getting back into the classroom and having a direct, direct impact on the people that I was working with. Um, and so I decided I wanted to do what she'd done. I wanted to have that impact on other people. So I st started my training as a coach. Um, I became quite quickly accredited. I became qualified and, and, and shortly after, afterwards, because of my skills in, in training and, and teaching, I started teaching coaches for the organization that had trained me. Um, and I've trained coaches all around the world, uh, often by, by means of teleclass and, and the internet. I've trained groups in, uh, in Haiti. <laughs> I've trained groups wow. in, yeah, in, which, was, which was incredible, actually, um, in India um, and mm -hmm. uh, around, certainly around Europe. And uh, it's, it's been an incredible journey. And I've been running my own coaching practice now for about 11 years. Um, and I think that pretty much brings us up to where we are now. So I was right, but I was wrong. Which is okay. I'm cool with that. I'm a mother. I've been right and I've been wrong so many times. Right, Stephanie? Don't answer. No, no, you're never wrong. You're never wrong. You're always right. <laughs> Parents yeah. have that ability. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how that, that surfaces. That, that's why I became a father. I needed to be right more of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it always comes down to the basic because I said so at some point. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's true because I said so. Yes, and mother knows best. Mother knows best, dear. There you go, exactly. Now, Simon, I am curious. Ah, oh, which yeah, great segue here. But from my from looking this up, you teach people to be curious about their lives. So, I mean, one obviously, it sounds like that was what kind of made made the difference for you. But how does that work? Do people have my experience is that we've spent so long not being curious and not being childlike that we have a hard time plugging back in. So do you mm. find people struggle with that? Mm. And what what's the point of this? Like, hey, be curious about your life. Like, what's the what's the point behind that? Mm. Well, for me, curiosity um, is a way of of questioning or or becoming curious about why we do things. I think so many of us are just led by our existing beliefs and our habits and our thoughts and we never really question them so curiosity for me is a great place to start thinking about well I do this but I wonder why I do this I wonder what it gives me you know I wonder what, what I wonder what I gain from this particular thing and is there a different way of doing it so that's where I talk about curiosity in terms of people's lives but what I love people to do is to start being curious about what, what could happen in the external in the outside world so when you go into a, into a situation, rather than going in to share an opinion or give a perspective, why not just be curious? Why not find out what, if you like, what wisdom um, the other people hold? You know, what's their perspective? Mm. And I do this all the time. So, you know, whenever I go into, for example, just to buy a cup of coffee, I love to find out a little bit about the person who's serving me. You know, quite often people in this country who are serving, it's because they're studying something. And if you can get someone talking about something they're passionate about, you, find, you start to find loads out about them. Um, and, I, and then I, you know, recently I was in a, in a, in a restaurant here and the, I got talking to the chef and I discovered that she really wanted to start her own business. And I said, well, why do you want to do that? She said, well, oh, nice. my real passion is that I want to open um, a center in Africa. She said, but I believe I need to start a restaurant first so I can be successful and, and build up the money so then I can start doing what I'm really passionate about in Africa. Well, this is someone who just served me a meal. And now we're talking about building something in Africa and about starting a business. And I'm really curious about that. So why, what is it that drives you to start a business so you can serve people in Africa? And what would it be like if you could start serving them now rather than waiting until you'd created this business? And now we're into, into, into a completely different conversation. We're into a conversation about possibility. And that's what I love about curiosity is just by being open and asking questions, world, new worlds open up and new worlds can be created. 
I, that's really interesting because I, I had a similar experience today. We um, went to a chamber meeting and the woman that stood up and spoke was actually somebody that I knew, a friend of mine. And um, she approached me afterwards because she knows that I teach and I coach. And, um, and she's starting out her own coaching business in town. And it's not the same as my coaching business. So, but we started talking and, um, you know, just by opening up with a question, what would you like to accomplish with your business? What would you like to do? I learned a lot. And, you know, and I also learned that she looked up to me as being successful, and which was interesting. I wasn't looking for compliments or anything like that, but it was just an interesting way, the whole conversation. And now it looks like she's going to, uh, she may possibly become a coaching client mm -hmm. as a result. And, and the funny thing was, is I wasn't fishing. You know, sometimes you are out there fishing. But the whole idea of curiosity and learning and getting to know about people, it opens up a lot of different worlds, like you're okay. saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a conversation with, a, with somebody yesterday who um, works in the arts, works in the, in the world of film. Um, and the company he's working for is going through some financial difficulty. And so he's looking for a new job and lots of offers have come up. And we were having a conversation about, do I do this job or this job or this job or this offers come up? And I said, well, let's just stop looking at it for a moment at what's on the menu. But what is it you would really love to do? Hmm. And he said, well, you know what? I've been a mus musician all of my life and I never get to do that. I've moved into the technical side of things. He said, but I'd love to get in that, into that creative side. We started having a conversation about what that might look like. And he talked about what he'd love to do is to find a way of marrying the technology with the creativity. And I said, do you know anybody else who does that? And he started talking about somebody who um, is, a, is a contact of his, somebody who'd won an Oscar for a, for a film they'd made recently. And he said, I think this person wants to get into that area as well. And I said, do you think you could support each other? He said, you know what, I've never thought about that. So he let, we left the conversation and his intention was to go and have the conversation with this person about how they might support each other in creating something that neither of them are doing currently. So if you like, we talk about creating a new world or creating a new opportunity. So the four or five job offers that he was looking at still exist. But what he's also doing now is creating an entirely new possibility. And mm -hmm. if you're creating a new possibility, then you get to choose how you're going to shape and form that. So it's not about you fitting into, a, into a, an off-the-peg suit. Mm -hmm. It's about you getting a bespoke suit, a you know, handmade, hand, you know, measured, made-to-measure suit. Yeah, tailored suit, made-to-measure. You start to create that. And it just comes through being curious about, well, what else is out there? Mm -hmm. What lies beyond your current level of experience or expectation? And let's start to talk about, about what's possible. Well, and you know, that really feeds into the next question we have, which is about the beginner's mind, because we can get so cluttered with what we know and what we think, but the beginner's mind is a very powerful, powerful thing. And especially when, um, when you're endeavoring to do something new or, you know, most of our listeners are business owners, entrepreneurs, people who maybe even are just starting in sales and really, really feel like they should know more than they do they don't know enough um, how does the beginner's mind really help people in their success in their in their journey to success because really success is a journey it's not a destination mm. well one of the things that i found when i first started my business was that i tried to do everything on my own mm. i thought i had to be i thought i had to be in the the expert in everything so yeah i'm a great coach i mean i knew that very early on it was very much in my genes but I'd never run a business before. I'd never done marketing and sales and all this. And so I started trying to become the expert in everything. And after a short period of time, um, I realized that actually if I started to ask people to help me, people are so generous with their time. They're so generous with their advice, their information. I can see you both nodding. So if I could let go of, if you like, the, the need to know and just be curious, um, start from the perspective of, well, well, what could I find out? What information is it out there that I don't currently know? If I let go of my expectations and my beliefs about, about the world, what could I start to learn? What could people start to teach me? So that's for me why, by, by a, big, why a beginner's mind is such a powerful place to start from, because it's like starting with a, a, a clean slate and saying, well, what information 
is there rather than what can I squeeze around what I already know? It's interesting that I have with all of my coaching clients, I make a series of agreements with them that we commit to before we start any coaching agreement. And one of them is about letting go of the beliefs that they know anything. Mm-hmm. Well, because, because only by letting go of, your, of, of our calcified beliefs about the world and what we know can we start to create new meaning. And it's only when um, we start to create meaning that we can start to create different behaviors and our different behaviors create different results. So we let go of, oh, that was, oh my gosh, that's like worth a million dollars. What did you just say? <laughs> well, I'm glad we're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh, that was that. great! I'm like, but, but, that again, Steph. I'm like, say what? Huh? <laughs> oh yeah, so I'm glad we're recording as well. But I mean, I was thinking, I was just talking with someone about this the other day. Um, so it ties in really well, and this is the sales side of it. Because you know the the typical sales cycle for a new sales rep <laughs> looks like this. When they first get started, they start closing a lot of sales. They get those lucky sales. What that's really happening, what's happening is they're getting all the sales because they don't know any better. They're not, they're not clotted up and obscure and they can see a lot more clearly. And then the problem is once they start doing well, suddenly they start learning. And so they totally dip. Mm. And it takes them forever after they've muddled up their mind with all of this extra information and the problem is the reason most people fail in sales is because they get stuck down here mm-hmm. instead of you know going back to that going back to oh what worked go back to that childlike space so i think that's really cool that you hit on that simon and the, the beautiful thing is that's exactly the, the graph of my of my business so i <laughs> I, I left a, i left a, a job that i had because i was so passionate about coaching everybody was responding so well to it so I left my job and I was at the peak of that, of that, that graph because everybody I knew I was coaching, but all of a sudden I ran out of people I knew and it was like, ah, they start, <laughs> start sliding down that thing and you get to the bottom. It's now, well, I can either continue doing what I was doing and stay where I am or find a different way of being. So how can I find a different way of behaving? I'm going to, I'm going to wipe the slate clean and I'm going to take the time to, to find out, to get information, to see, who can help and support me. So since we've been talking and we've obviously established being curious, going from that childlike clean slate is so important. What are some simple steps that our listeners can use to go back to that, that point in their, in their head? I I think that the, the first thing to do is to make the intention to do that. Because if you don't, well, if you don't commit to doing something, then you'll, you'll never do it. Um, and then perhaps some questions to ask would be a really good place to start. So it, it's, it's if, you, if you like, it's giving, you so, giving yourself some prompts and things to remember. Um, so I don't know, going into a, a situation, I'm in, I don't have a list of questions. I'm just coming up with them right now. But questions like, what could I learn from this person? What do I believe I know that is not serving me? You know, those kinds of questions. Oh, well, because so it's about challenging our, our preconceptions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How is what I know stopping me from getting what it is I want to get? You know, how is what I'm being preventing me from creating the relationships that I want to create? Those kinds of questions. So that's what I mean about being curious and going back and looking beneath, if you like, beneath the, uh, beneath the surface. Mm-hmm. Because it's our beliefs which create you know, which, which create our model of the world and our model of the world um, starts to create how we act and how we act is what uh, creates the, the results that we get. And so a lot of people make the mistake, I think, of starting at the actions, looking at, looking at the results and then th- seeing what it is that they do. And what I love to do is to get people to encourage, them, encourage people to start looking at what it is that they're thinking. Mm. What's the language that they're using? What do they habitually do? And how is that? how is that serving them but also more importantly how is that holding them back um so that, that, that's what i would do is in, in, encourage people to make the commitment and then ask themselves some questions i think it's great to get uh, other people to ask you questions mm-hmm. um and just go into the you know to slow down whenever you have an interaction with somebody slow down take time to find out about that person yeah. 
start to create that relationship. I knew a great sales guy, it's wonderful. I, I traveled around Singapore with somebody um, uh, who was a, a really great salesperson. And everybody he's, we met, he would just start asking questions about them. And I was getting quite kind of anxious looking at the time, thinking we've only got an hour with this person. You haven't even mentioned what it, mentioned what it is we're here to, to sell. And I asked him about it afterwards and he said, what he always tried to do is to make sure he could find three things that they had in, he had in common with the person that he was, uh, that he was meeting. And he, he would just take his time until he got those three things. And the reason he did that um, was because it creates a great relationship, but also it reminded him to slow down and to spend time, as much time, at least as much time, focusing on getting to know the person as it is to start telling them anything that, that, that he had to, to offer. It was much more about, how can I learn and understand about you? That's a tremendous sales. I mean, sales has a bad rap just because, you know, people think you're always after the money, always after the money. But the best salespeople, the ones that I look up to and admire, are the people who understand the importance of building relationships, mm. that understand the importance of getting to know customers. Like this woman that approached me today. My intention was not to convert her into a coaching client, and yet here I stood helping her. I was asking her questions about what she wanted to do, what her business was, what her passion was, and you know how she would like those things to change. And I said, you know, the best way to do this is for us to just spend down together 30 minutes, you know, talking about your business goals, what you want to do, mm -hmm. which actually leads to the next point, because the one thing I mentioned to her and the one thing that comes very clear from you is that you have to be very clear. You have to have clarity about yourself and you have to have clarity about what you want, what your passion is. So um, now on your website, you mentioned that clarity is the mindset that enables us to view the world as an adventure. Mm. Now, why is that so critical and how has that made a difference in your life and the life of your clients? <laughs> that's, that's a big question. <laughs> there, there Did you want to go back to the website? There was a, no. yeah, there was a lot of, yeah, let me go and look at the website. A moment. <laughs> so we, we're talking about clarity and how, and how um, I believe that clarity gives us an opportunity to start creating a different world. So if we can get clear about what our vision is, about what our passions are, about the, the world that we'd want to live into, I think that we, that's when it starts to get exciting, is when we get some clarity about, about what's, the, what's the life I'd like to live? Or what's the thing that I'd like to create in this life? What's the legacy I'd like to leave? So having some sense of what your purpose is, and if you like the bigger picture, is a really great place because the energy of that, that the clarity of that vision, can often keep us going when we come up against obstacles. So I spend a lot of time helping people to get clarity about, about what it is that they'd love to create, clarity about their wildest dreams, their biggest ideas, mm -hmm. and really help them to bring those into form and to use language to create those. So they, they become something which is almost tangible and they can, they can look at and feel. Because I believe that if you, if you believe something is possible, then the how will always find you. But you've, but you've got to first of all believe it's possible. So create something which feels real. So I spend a lot of time with my clients focusing on, on, on getting that, the sense of um, a real tangible connection with what it is that they want to create. Because I'm, you know, I'm, I consider myself to be an expert in helping people to get, to get or create things that they couldn't do on their own. So that's, that's the journey that I take them on. So I stretch people through my questioning, through my support, through, through helping them to... to, to to really to create something which is greater than they could create on their own. And once we've done that, I then start to get, help people to get clear on the, the mindset that they're going to need in order to start creating that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, that's a really, again, a really important thing. Getting clear on, well, what are the steps I'm going to need to take in order, in order to be able to do this? So to me, clarity is something which enables us to start to move forward because when we've got that fog, mm -hmm it's really, really difficult to know what the first step is. Yeah. Again, so by slowing down, um, often the first steps start to present themselves quite naturally because you're no longer racing. You've, you've got time to see the opportunities which are in front of you. And that again comes through being, being clear um, 
I, I practice meditation for that reason and mindfulness to help people to get real clarity. Um, and then they can start to see the opportunities that present themselves in creating the journey towards the thing that they want to create. So life becomes this great adventure rather than a series of obstacles to be overcome. Wow. I'm just like, that's we, cool. we always seem to get coaching when we're on these interviews, don't you think, Stephanie? <laughs> <laughs> we well, pick up some pretty amazing ideas. Um, I mean, the uh, uh, first thing I was going to ask is I always want to give our, our listeners something tangible to walk away with is what can our listeners do to create clarity? But, you know, it almost sounds like to an extent it's something that we really do need help with, which I, I can see. I can see my own because it's kind of the forest for the trees, right? I'm so close to the problem. I'm so close to where I'm at. So, I mean, is, is that really, you know, in order to get more clarity is, is the best way to do that to get someone else involved. You, you mentioned asking questions of other people earlier too. Sure. I, I think it's absolutely one of the greatest ways of, of getting greater clarity because it's very difficult to ask ourselves different questions. Right. It's very difficult, to, it's very difficult to, to, to solve a problem at the same level of thinking that created it. So what I think I do as a, as a coach, yeah, it's about helping people to elevate their thinking or to create a different level to their thinking because yeah. that's the way that they can start to get out of that, those loops that we get in you know, when we can't mm. find the solution. It's like, well, the solution's there, but I can't find it because I can only use the thoughts that I've currently got. Right. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I lend them my brain. I say, well, let, you know, let's, let's do this together. Let's see if we can create something great, great some greater clarity together. Well, and I think too, um, a lot of times when we're stuck or we're not clear, we're not clear because we're afraid to go deeper. We're afraid to look at what the real reasons are. And um, a coach like yourself, Russell, God, okay, I did it. I'm sorry, <laughs> but a coach like yourself, Simon. <laughs> oh dear, what was that? That's good. It's all good. This is uh, live radio. <laughs> this is live radio. I, it's, it's a telephone that I didn't take out of the room before we started recording. I can I can move it now. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful sound. But okay, now that I got totally off track and we called you by the wrong name, but the thing I think that coaching, getting back to the whole idea, of coaching. A, a good coach will gently take you past the barriers that are keeping you from finding and getting clear on what your passion is and the next steps. Cause we do get stuck. Is that in your experience? Well, I, I have a coach, so that would suggest that I, that is my experience. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't take this journey on my own. I think it's fantastic. I've got somebody who I can, who I can go deep with, who can help me understand, what my current thinking, where it's serving me and where it's limiting me um, to help me to reflect and to think bigger. I mean, they know that's, I use my coach in exactly the way that my, my uh, creative partners the people I work with. Um, they use me. It's, it's about how we can, how we can create new realities, how we can create bigger, how we can create more, how we can create more fulfillment mm -hmm. um, by helping people to realize what their real values are and how they can express those values in the creation of something which has a positive impact. I mean, my passion is about, is about creating positive impacts in the world. And so I, I take people on journeys around the world to see where we, can, uh, where we can be of service. Because again, if we take people into countries that they've never been to before, they have to be back at the beginner's mind. Because the things that they would use in their normal circumstances don't, don't work. work. You know, so those tools and techniques we always always rely on to get us out of out of situations are no longer relevant in where we are now. So, and I love again taking people back to a space where they now have to start to recreate their beliefs, their thoughts, their behaviours based on the new results that they want to create. Yeah, that. That's would, would you like me to manage that? Because uh, it's. Oh kind of, no! Don't no! Don't worry. It might it, ring it, a few times. It's. <laughs> I, I know who it is, which is why it's interesting. It's, it's uh, somebody, somebody uh, ringing from Liberia in West Africa. Who, who, who uh, she's some a, a girl that I that I sponsor out there, and uh, she sometimes rings just to check in. And if I don't answer the phone, she assumes it because she assumes it because there's no connection, so she just keeps ringing. 
Um, <laughs> so well, I might just put the phone out the door if that's okay. Why don't, yeah, I, well, we've just got, I think, another question or two. So, but okay, if well, she's going to be insistent, it, it's really up to you okay, because well, it, it adds spice. It. it adds spice. Stephanie, <laughs> pick it up, girl. Pick it up. All right. I, I was <laughs> Finish having your spicy conversation. <laughs> I didn't know if I was supposed to put in there. <laughs> Simon, uh, on a totally different and unrelated conversation here. Well, kind of a, not, not necessarily unrelated. It's related. But it's related. Um, you know, one of the things that I teach my clients is to use, especially when you are having to make mindset shifts, when you're having to change how you're looking and thinking about something, is to use affirmations, but I know they've gotten kind of a bad rap a little bit. So I don't know if you maybe would mind sharing some of your thoughts as far as affirmations go. Well, affirmations are absolutely fundamental building block in creating a new mindset. I mean, that, that's, that's how I, how I see it to me. Um, what the, the, the world that we create is based on, on the thoughts that we have. Mm. Um, but they're not then sorry the actions that we that we that we um do are a result of our conscious mind but really the beliefs that we have are those subconscious beliefs and the way that i think that we reprogram those is by choosing new new ways of thinking and then and then looking at ways of reprogramming the mind so i do affirmations daily i have a fantastic app on my phone called think up which I'd recommend everybody gets. It's a great app that you can record your affirmations on. Um, you can put them to music. You can randomize them. They've got, it's got a timer. Mm -hmm. It's just wonderful. And it, and it comes up with a beautiful, gentle reminder in the morning to listen and, and one in the evening uh, to listen also. And it's, you know, it's, it's about repetition. It's about repeating the new empowering thinking habits um, mm -hmm. in a way of, of, of creating a new mindset. Because it's really, you know, the mindsets that we have, to me, it's a little bit like when you go out and buy a brand new iPod. It's got nothing on it. But for the first few years of your life, you're just laying down everybody's music, you know, everyone, else, everyone else's music choices on that. Right. And then as you get older, you just, all you're doing is just listening to that iPod for the rest of your life. And you have no way of changing mm. the playlist. But it was never your playlist. It was, it was the people who were responsible for bringing you up. So you're now living your life based on some other kind of um, beliefs that were given to you when you were in your, you know, your early years. And to me, the way that we can reprogram is literally to start taking some of the old beliefs off to create space for the new and then start to reprogram with beliefs which serve us, which are empowering, which are the ones that we want to live from, which create the realities that we want to live into. Mm. Do you have like any... Um steps or ways that our listeners could develop meaningful affirmations to help themselves? I mean, apart from getting a good coach like yourself or sure. one well, of I'll, us. I'll give two really, really simple tips. One of them is to read a, a great book, um, which is called How to Solve Your Money Problems Forever oh, by Victor, nice. Block, uh, Victor Bock. And why that's a fantastic book is, yeah, it's about how to sell, solve money problems. But what's brilliant about that book is it talks really clearly about how we create our world through our thoughts and then how we can reprogram them. It's really, really fabulous. And it can be used, yes, for money, but also for lots of different areas. And it has a whole series of, of, of instructions on how to create powerful affirmations. And the next step that I would take is to is to get the, the app think up i sound like i'm doing some publicity app. it's okay I'm not, I'm not paid by either of these to, but, but get think up and you can program your voice and you can listen to your own affirmations or you can use some that they suggest but the wonderful thing about think up is you get to record your own voice doing it and you can then uh, uh, you can start to build up the, a mindset through repetition so that's what i would do those simple steps that's what i'm going to do because that, that sounds really, I've been reading a book by B.F. Austin called How to Make Money. And you know what? It's a short book, but most of the book is about character. It's about thought. It's about having faith. It's about dismissing doubt and fear. It's transformational. And then I realized that when I'm struggling with money, it's because I'm, I have an attachment or I have thoughts about the money that aren't serving me. They're not helping 
not just me, but it's not about me only. It's about my family. It's about the people I serve, my employees, my, my customers and everything else. So, um, that's, so the name of the book again is how to solve all your money problems forever, how to solve all your money problems forever by Victor Bock, B O C. Victor Bock, B O C. And then the think up app, think up app. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I know we need to wind things down. Normally, Stephanie does that. And we were talking about a way for people to get in touch with you, but we wanted to be very specific because when you're going to be working with Simon, Simon is not a $150 an hour coach. I mean, what you guys are getting with us today is valuable that other people are paying a good amount of money to receive. So, Simon... But there may be somebody here who says, you know, I really am serious. I am very serious about making those shifts in my life. I want to find my purpose. I want to have that clarity. How can they get in touch with you and find out more about working with you? Yeah. So for me, the, the, the kind of the filter that I use is commitment. Are people prepared to do the work? Because shift, shifting a mindset you know, creating an incredible business, developing a, a vision of something that you then want to create takes commitment. So I'm really willing to, to, to spend my time with people who are prepared to dream big and make a commitment into do, to doing the work in order to make, those, those, to make the transformational journey. And I'll be with them every step of the way. I work relentlessly to help my clients to create the things that they want to create. So if anybody feels that they want to share a really inspiring idea with me and are incredibly committed to having a deep conversation, which is potentially life changing, then they need to, to go to my website, which is Simon Crow with an E dot com. And there's a, there's a contact link, link on there and they can connect with me through that. That's awesome. So for our listeners out there, I mean, obviously we've talked about this before. We've talked about the power of, the power of having someone there to help you, to guide you, a coach, because you cannot get yourself to your maximum potential on your own. Or if you do, it will take you two or three times longer than it should. The point of, we we talk about always be learning, always be learning. It's it's a trait of a black belt. What I'm going to encourage you guys to do right now is, first of all, listen to this this, uh, recording a couple of times over, because I think you'll get something different every time you go through it. I think, I think I will too. Um, I was trying to go through our recordings a couple of times. I'm sure you guys will as well. So listen to it a couple of times. And if this seems like something that, you know, the, the great thing about coaches is that you've got so many options out there and everyone brings something different and incredible to the table. And if what Simon has said has spoken to you, visit simoncrow.com, S-I-M-O-N-C-R-O-W-E-W-E, <laughs> and go to the contact. And, um, you know, guys, what I'm going to challenge you to do is this. I always try and give our listeners a a walk away, a challenge, something to do. I'm going to challenge you to step outside your comfort zone and do one thing this week that you're afraid of, that you can grow, something that will force you to learn, something that will force you to learn. Don't just go sit there and say, well, I I don't like tomatoes. I'm going to eat a tomato this week. Do something that will force you to grow and to learn because that is where the magic happens. Simon, mm-hmm. thank you so much for joining us. This was awesome. It really was great. It's wonderful. And can I just add something to what you've just said? Is that okay? Please, yeah, go for it. So if somebody contacts me as a result of listening to this podcast, this radio show, so just mentioning that, that this is where they came ac- across us, and just mention that, I'll know that they understand the level of commitment we're asking for for people to commit to this. So I already know that they're, they're willing to step into doing something which is uncomfortable. But if they're prepared to share with me in an email that they send me their, their wildest dream, they're prepared to, just, to say the things that they pro- 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 sorry, probably never told anybody before about the, the kind of this wonderful thing that they'd love to create in the world. I'd absolutely love to, to connect with those people and see if there's a way that I can serve and support them in creating that. Awesome. Well, guys, I don't think I need to, uh, I don't think I need to give you guys anything else from there. I think that was a perfect way to wrap this one up. Um, I'm Stephanie here for Anna, encouraging you to join us again next week. You know, we always bring amazing guests, amazing content to help you grow and improve your life, your future and your business. I'm encouraging you to get out there and 
make it a great week. We are the Black Belt Sellers of Southwest and Central Texas, and um, your life is in your hands. What will you do with it?